This is Business Incorporated. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the program today, Barclays Bank of Kenya to close seven of its branches in the East African country in October. And Kenya reviews mining code as it seeks to attract investment into the sector. Plus, Egypt's non-oil private sector business activity contracts for the 21st consecutive month in June. Let's get started now. We're starting off um, with the markets as um, all the markets in Africa that we track here on the program were in the red at um, intraday. The NSC All Share Index was trading low 0.55% as at noon. Our South African market was down 0.16%. Egypt's market 0.32% down and um, Kenya closed down 0.19% on Monday. And in the Middle East, the Qatar stock market continued rebounding today, though still down 0.46% at intraday, but um, up from lows hit uh, because of the diplomatic crisis surrounding Doha, while profit taking in a few Saudi Arabian blue chips dragged down that market down. Uh, a deadline set uh, by four Arab states for Doha to comply with their demands will expire later today. But net buying by foreign investors in the Qatari stock market over the last few days suggests some funds do not think uh, the additional sanctions will be crippling while they believe there is now value in the market. Saudi Arabia's index fell 1.37% as a few blue chips which had surged last week after MSCI said it would consider Riyadh for emerging market status and economic performer Mohammed bin Salman was promoted to Crown Prince pulled back. Dubai's index fell 0.28% as blue chip MR properties slid 1.1%, but GFH Financial, the most heavily traded stock, rose 1.8% after saying it had obtained approval from the Central Bank of Bahrain to buy back up to 5% of its issued Treasury shares. Abu Dhabi was off 0.52%. And markets in Europe were lower in early trade as international relations came under pressure and oil prices slipped, halting a run of eight straight days of gains. For more on the markets, let's talk to my colleague in Frankfurt, Conrad Busen. Hello, Conrad. Always, I guess Conrad is not yet ready for us, and I will get back to him as soon as um, he's ready to talk to us. We move on now to... The U.S. markets, of course, there the markets are closed today because of the 4th of July holiday. Monday also marked the start of a shortened trading week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average notched a record high before closing on Monday at about 130 points higher, with Goldman Sachs contributing the most gains. The S&P 500 rose 0.23% with financials and energy leading advances. The Nasdaq Composite lagged, trading 0.5% lower. July 3 has historically been a strong day for stocks according to data from Bespoke Investment Group since 1928. The S&P 500 has averaged a one-day change of positive 0.5% with positive returns nearly 73% of the time. Well, I guess Conrad is ready now to talk to us. Hello, Conrad. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming through to us. Good afternoon, Chidi. Great to be back at Business Incorporated. <laughs> right. Now, North Korea, once again, has uh, tested the patience of the international community with a ballistic missile launch into Japanese waters. Is this a market-moving headline today across the Atlantic? It definitely is, Jimmy. You know, after yesterday, the kickoff for the second half of this year went quite well on the markets with the Dow Jones Industrial Average in New York climbing temporarily on a new record high and the German DAX here in Frankfurt gaining somewhat. 
Today, uh, the geopolitical risks are shifting back into investors' focus. Um, the um, missile launch by North Korea made many investors in Asia very nervous. Uh, and of course, there's more geopolitical risk that uh, is on the minds of investors. For example, Qatar, where the deadline against the Emirate uh, is running out tomorrow. And you know, uh, this has repercussions until Frankfurt, you know, we have, for example, a company here, a DAX member, Linda, which is a supplier of industrial gases, and it's the largest um, uh, exploiter of helium coming from Qatar. Uh, those production sites in the Emirate uh, are blocked uh, right now because of the boycott against the Emirate, and that's why you know the share price of Linda is under pressure, and it has been for the whole month of June. Right. Conrad, well, looking behind you there now, the DAX seem to be tilting up uh, as we're speaking. Now, just wondering what's pushing the market where you're standing. But let's look at the comment by the French President Emmanuel Macron, who has um, threatened referendum if his reform agenda is not passed through uh, Parliament quickly enough. Now, what kind of signal is the market getting from Macron's statement? Well, I must say that uh, the speech that Macron gave was um, quite well received by a more majority of uh, people you can talk to here, or if you look in, uh, you know, the media, the commentators looking from Germany to France and listening to what uh, Macron had to say in this speech to the parliamentarians.